tapping everybody is DJ Funny Coach coming to you live. That's right, baby. And Kinder Rocks and Zenzibar living that pom pom lifestyle. You see money, peace of mind. Come join us on the beaches of the World Club because you know what? I am my ancestor and you are too. You deserve it. Get with me, baby. Tell them that beautiful shit out there. got to do the four dirty little words. Number one, discipline. Number two, accountability. Number three, plug into the seven spheres of money system. And number four, put your head down, go to work in three to six years. You can be completely consumer debt free, pay off your house in five to seven years, and have a six-figure income by business, real estate, leveraging the tax laws. But first things first, you got to hit that link, come to the master class, and get free right now today. Peace. Tyletto Organic Tequila is so crisp, so incredibly smooth, it's simply in a category by itself. This is luxury. Light tastes better naturally, so should your tequila. This is Tyletto. Enjoy responsibly. Visit ToledoTequila.com to get your bottle of Tyletto Organic Tequila. Get a 10% discount on DJ The Money Coach by entering promo code MONEY at checkout. Again, that's ToledoTequila.com. Promo code MONEY to get 10% off your Toledo purchase. Now, let's start the show. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Nick's Knowledge and Notions in Cube Science Series brought to you by the Seven Spheres of Money. Thank you for joining us. And before we get started with the show, go ahead and like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the Seven Spheres of Money on this YouTube channel. Uh, so... We can continue to spread the message far and wide of the good news, the gospel of the pom-pom lifestyle, plenty of money, peace of mind, and this real talk that we bring to you consistently all the time. Now, as you can see, I'm solo on the screen for this go around. And also I'm I'm not live. You know, I had, had an event going on at the time that we normally go live, a little scheduling conflict, but we still wanted to bring you the content so uh, you're going to be seeing a very powerful interview in just a few moments that, uh, that I recorded a few weeks ago. So you're going to see that in a few moments. But before I get into that, before we get into that, I just have a few announcements to go through. Some things coming up that you'll want to know and that you'll want to take part in. So let's get those covered and out of the way before we get into this amazing interview. So the first thing is that our next masterclass hosted by DJ The Money Coach, our Refund to Retirement Secrets to Wealth masterclass will be Wednesday, April 6th, 2022. Of course, hosted by DJ The Money Coach, but DJ will also be joined by a couple more members of our team. And this will be a special tech edition of the secrets of wealth and refund to retirement webinar because it is tax season and this special tech edition will feature our team member Kadira Muhammad and she will be giving a master training on automation and systems and DJ will also be joined by DJ the jet setter the other DJ whom you met last Friday on the show and she will be giving you the rest of those travel hacks you know she gave you a little little preview last Friday on last Friday's episode of Nick's Knowledge and Notions she gave you a few travel hacks that that you can use to help you save some money and have the most enjoyable experience when you're traveling so she'll be giving you the rest of those travel hacks and she will also be doing a master training on acquiring business credit lines. You know, for those of you who are entrepreneurs, have your entity structure, she'll be doing a master class, a master training on acquiring business credit lines. So that's something that you do not want to miss. Join us for the next master class 
on Wednesday, April 6, 2022. You can register for that by clicking the link in the description. The ABCs of Wealth Masterclass. And with that masterclass, by registering for that masterclass, you'll get access to the live event. You'll also get a digital copy of the ABCs of Wealth, Common Sense Strategy for Achieving the American Truth and the American Dream by DJ the Money Coach. And you will also get the Family Finance one-on-one -on -one digital course, 18 modules, three hours, teaching you how to become consumer debt-free, how to build a six-figure passive income, how to become a certified entrepreneur, how to boost your credit score 30 days or less. So you wanna, you wanna register so you can get into that live masterclass and you can get that family finance course, the ABCs of Wealth, and also that complimentary consultation with DJ the Money Coach, which is the best part. People love that complimentary consultation because that's that's that one-on-one -on -one coaching session where DJ answers your questions about your personal finances, whatever questions that you have. And uh, he also collects your financial information so he can give you a tailored experience in a tailored coaching session specific to your unique needs and goals. So you want to you want to get in on that. You want to get in on that masterclass and that ABC's of wealth bundle. And it's under two hundred dollars. So that's the other reason why you want to get in there. Incredible value. So you know how DJ and I always say we love Neiman Marcus value at Walmart prices and we hate Walmart crap at Walmart prices. Well, that's not just for us. You know, we're giving that to you. We're giving you Neiman Marcus value at Walmart prices. So you want to get in on that. Next thing on the on the list is our second year anniversary. DJ the Money Coach LLC second year anniversary on these platforms on the internet, on YouTube. It's our second year anniversary coming up on April 20th, 2022. And if you've been rocking with us, you know, over a year now, and you were here for our first, first year anniversary, you saw that we gave away lots of stuff. We gave away $10,000 worth of DJ The Money Coach, Seven Spears of Money, products and services. We're doing it again this year, but even bigger. Since it's our second year anniversary, we're multiplying that by two. So instead of giving away 10 grand worth of products and services, we are giving away 20 grand worth of products and services. And not only that, we also have some major, major announcements dealing with travel, dealing with business. So you want to be here for that second year anniversary show that we do on April 20th. And you just want to be here for the month of April leading up to the anniversary because you could be a winner. But, but, there is a big but. In order for you to be a winner, you have to have never worked with us before. You know, receive coaching sessions from DJ The Money Coach or anyone from the Seven Spears of Money team. In order to be a winner, you have to be a first timer with us. So if you've been here with us and worked with us before, this is a perfect time to invite your friends, family, colleagues to join in on the celebration because they could be a winner. And if you've been watching DJ The Money Coach on YouTube, whether here on the Seven Spheres of Money or on Erica Williams' channel, this is a perfect time to get with us. If you've been on the fence and you've been wondering whether you know you should get with DJ or not, but you've been loving the information, this is the time to get with us because you could be a winner too. So DJ The Money Coach, second year anniversary, April 20th. Be here to hear those announcements. Be here because you could be a winner too. Next, next. The Pom Pom Lifestyle launch. We launched the Pom Pom Lifestyle Wealth Conference 
packages on our previous shows the last few weeks. You know, you saw DJ was in Zanzibar. We had DJ the Jet Setter last week giving her travel hacks and also telling you about the amazing trips that we have coming up. So just want to remind you all about that. We have the Mexico trip, Memorial Day weekend, four days, three nights in a sunny, beautiful beach, all-inclusive experience. And then in August or September, we, we're going back to Zanzibar. DJ the Money Coach is going back to Zanzibar. He wants to take you with him for seven nights, eight days, eight days, seven nights to Zanzibar, Tanzania. So if you want to get in on those trips, which you probably want to do, the link to pay your deposit for either one of those trips or both is in the description below. So go ahead and pay that deposit. And um, yeah, join us in Mexico, Memorial Day weekend, and or in Zanzibar in August to September. So I believe that's it. I'm just checking my notes, make sure I have everything, make sure I covered everything. Oh, I forgot to give you the title. So this isn't just a trip. This isn't just a trip to Mexico or Zanzibar. This is the Health, Wealth, and Leisure Pom Pom Lifestyle Conference. So we're gonna be giving you a whole experience. Health, Wealth, and Leisure. That's right, that second one we said, well, there's gonna be some business opportunities, especially in Zanzibar. If you haven't heard, you know, if you, if you haven't heard, go back and watch those previous shows so you can learn about those opportunities, those business opportunities. So we'll be covering all of that in those, um, in that health, wealth, and leisure pom-pom lifestyle conference in Mexico and then in Zanzibar. So join us for that. All the links are in the description, the link to pay your deposit for those, for those conferences, the link to register for the masterclass next Wednesday that's uh that's below as well so without further ado let's head on over to the interview and just to give you some background on this interview uh first of all well I will I'll tell you about who this is first so so this is a friend of mine a friend of mine named Misty she is the founder of Sisters Against Mental Abuse SAMA for short and uh, this is an audio interview uh, because since Sama was founded and the podcast was started, uh, Misty has been on the fence about revealing her identity since she received some hate and some trolls, you know, so she's not quite ready to reveal herself or reveal her face at least to, to the public, but you can trust her. I know her personally. You know, we we hung out before, you know, so I she she's definitely the real deal. She's definitely the real deal. Uh so uh we recorded this interview a few weeks ago. It was originally supposed to air during March for Women's History Month, but since you know DJ came back, was coming back from Zanzibar with a ton of information and launch uh, of the Pom Pom lifestyle, health, well and leisure conferences, we had to push this interview back so we can get the word out about Zanzibar and the launching of this pom-pom lifestyle. But better late, better late than never, right? And uh, this is some information that, that's gonna be relevant to our community, you know, uh, our black people and always be relevant. Uh, dealing with mental and physical abuse it's a major issue you know amongst i mean amongst all races but it's it's a it's a major issue amongst amongst uh black people as well so without further ado i introduce to you misty founder 
of Sama Sisters Against Mental Abuse. Enjoy. Peace. Misty, what's going on? How are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm happy to see you. Happy to be here. So thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to, to be here. Before we talk about Sama, why don't you give, uh, give us a little bit of information about, about yourself, you know, whatever you want to share with our, with our audience, and then we will talk about what Sisters Against Mental Abuse is all about. All right. Um, well, I'm Misty. I'm from Michigan. Um, and it's funny, my background is heavily in international relations. Uh, I've lived abroad multiple times, had a lot of different experiences, uh, went to various schools, um, but I've always really been interested in psychology and how the mind works. Um, and I, that was just something that was always in the back of my mind, but for some reason, I didn't feel like it was something that I wanted to pursue at the time. Um, and so now I'm here <laughs> pretty much. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So psychology and a little bit, a little bit of, um, you know, issues that are, that are facing, you know, black people and, and black women in general, because I know in our conversations over the years, we, we've had a lot of conversations about issues that are affecting us and, you know, what, what should be done about those things too, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we already know this. When it comes to us, particularly as Black people, things are not taken as seriously. We know when we go to doctors, like in a medical sense, especially Black women, you know, things that we say are not taken seriously. Um, I've heard of a lot of Black women um, during their pregnancies or having complications. We've seen it with Serena. So in no sense are we taken seriously, especially when it comes to like mental health or, or things to that sort. So that's really, really something that's been on my mind for a while now. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So let's talk about sisters against mental abuse. So where, where did this idea come from to focus specifically on black women and mental abuse? Where, where did this uh, idea come from to, to start this organization? So as I mentioned, I had always been interested in psychology ever since I was, I mean, I, in grade school, I remember for some reason, I don't know why we were adolescents taking psychology courses, but we did. And I was so interested. Um, and that was something that always stuck with me uh, as I got older. And so I had just come out of a mentally abusive relationship and I was able to have like that, um, like that third person perspective, like, whoa, this was messed up. And I was telling my friends about it through the relationship and they never pointed out to me how, just how messed up some of the things were like some of the stuff that happened was really messed up and none of them um saw it as mental abuse they just kind of oh well you know whatever kind of excuses they could come up with so I share my struggles nobody really took it seriously nobody really realized how messed up it was and then when I was out of that I started seeing other black women around me going through some similar things, except they were the ones justifying it. Mm. And then also at the same time, um, there is an organization called Black Femicide, and they started growing and doing research. And their data kind of works with the FBI data. And it says that Black women are being, um, what's the word? Because I, I know this is YouTube. I don't want to <laughs> say anything incriminating. But every five and a half hours, another Black woman is taken away. Um, her life is taken away from her. And so I started looking into it more and more research. And I started seeing the connection between mental abuse and physical abuse. And then, you know, the, um, the taking of these women's lives. And so there is a strong correlation. And if Black women can start to see these red flags and leave before these situations escalate, a lot of them would be in a better place. And there's a lot of stuff that's in our community is not okay, but we put up with it. Like we're desensitized to being called names when we say no to a partner or we're desensitized to um, when someone is taking control of the resources or there's just so many things that are messed up. So that's kind of where 
um, where I started with Sama. Okay, okay. Uh, just to just to give a you know a clear picture, what and I, and I know you kind of alluded to some of those um, some of those examples, but you know what what might mental abuse look like and sound like you know compared to physical abuse, which more people are more aware of. I think you were you kind of alluding to the fact that a lot of a lot of people don't look at mental abuse as abuse. What does mental abuse look like? What are some examples? Yeah. So in in this research and even in talking to different therapists and counselors, because I do consult with them daily. I'm aware I don't have the the um, the degree, but I do have a lot of therapists and people that give insight and help me with the channel. Um, there is most times some sort of mental abuse before it gets physical. So um, name calling or devaluing you or a lot of like gaslighting, like denying your reality, trying to make you think that you're crazy. Um, I think I mentioned controlling your resources, which is financial abuse. Like you got to give this person your paycheck and they take it and do whatever they want. Or we see a lot of times where there's a black woman in particular. I mean, any of this can go the opposite way, but my focus is black women. So I'm speaking from... Um, this perspective but you see a lot of times black women their car is with their guy or whoever they're dating and they just take their car without their permission that that's not yours Um, there's a boundary that's being disrespected there so a lot of those sorts of things especially the name calling and like you know you guys get into an argument and just this person loses control you start getting maybe afraid there's physical intimidation maybe punching the wall beside you because it it creates fear inside of you and that is that's mental agony that's torture right there so those are some of the examples uh just a few but mental and emotional abuse comes in so many different ways which one of those uh did you experience uh in in your in your life uh you know that ultimately led to you doing this research and starting this organization uh, which which forms did you did you experience so for me i was um <laughs> i was with the perfect you know this guy was it was an african man right so you know he's the epitome of masculinity and he makes six figures he drives a benz he's the most popular guy catholic guy you know he's active in his church mm-hmm. his family thinks he's per- so he had this whole entire persona Um, And so he could also use that to make me deny my reality. Like we had incidents uh, like where, um, how do I say this? We had an incident where I did not want to sleep with him, but it happened anyway. And he convinced me that I wasn't being a good Christian because I wasn't forgiving. He would tell me, oh, well, you have to forgive or we would talk about marriage and stuff like that. And he would talk about how women who divorce their husbands are going to hell. And I'm like, well, what about, you know, physical abuse? And he's like, no, you have to stick with them. And so that was a huge red flag. Um, a lot of it will be covert, like out of nowhere, we're hanging out and he would literally pick a fight with me over something like we were watching a movie and there were two, two men and there was a woman who had to choose between the guys essentially. And one of them was like a wealthy guy, CEO of a company. And then the other guy was, you know, he was more of a blue collar guy, but he was really sweet and funny and stuff. And my ex goes, well, you only care about money. So you would pick the rich guy, wouldn't you? I was like, what? <laughs> we're just watching a movie. I, and I can't even go through all the situations. But at some point, right. I had to start writing down these incidents because he would gaslight me so bad and tell me, that's not what I said, or try to change the context. And when I started keeping a log, I mean, that should have been a red flag within itself. But when I started keeping a log, I would be able to go back and say, no, something's not right here. This is not what happened. So those are the kind of incidences. Um, and, And then when you do tell these people, hey, this is mental abuse, or this is abuse, I didn't hit you. I didn't put my hands on you. So yeah that those were some of the the many situations that i came up against okay okay wow so this 
So dealing with a man who who seems to be perfect, you know, on the surface and, you know, on paper, did that make it a challenge for you to to get support on that? You know, where people are looking at you and looking at him like, what are you talking about? This guy's perfect. Oh, he yeah. Can't be doing oh, yeah. Things. <laughs> All the time. Yes. Um, he had a, he has a sister-in-law and her brother, sorry, he has a sister-in-law and his brother treats her kind of similar to the way that he treats me. Mm. Um, but the money kept her, <laughs> she stayed for the money and I guess she had married him too, but we would talk about these things and in a way it brought comfort, but in a way I feel like when I spoke to other people, even her, it's like they didn't believe me. Or he would, when we had a fight, he would run off and start a smear campaign. And so he turned a lot of his friends against me as well. I mean, they weren't my friends, so like it shouldn't be big of a, that big of a deal. But it, I started to form friendships with these people too. So that smear campaign, like them going and making up stuff or twisting things around to make you look bad is... Uh, that was really hard um, with a good guy image. It was, that was probably one of the most difficult things is to get people to believe me. Making this general to, to the work that you're doing, did you find, so in your research, did you find that this was a common theme amongst um, the women who, who have experience or black women who have experienced mental abuse? Uh, is this a common theme with the whole, you know, good guy image on the surface, but... <laughs> It's a different story beneath the surface. And so that's the thing. Okay, so first, there isn't like an extensive um, <laughs> database of Black women sharing these stories because they mm. typically don't. They brush it off or they make themselves the bad guy or they listen to family or whatever the case. They end up not talking about it because I think that they feel crazy or whatever the case. Um, and so... With that, I did have another, actually, I think just about all of the guests that I've had when it came to dating, because we also talk about um, family, mental abuse, and then I also want to cover employment, but I, I can think of one in particular where her story sounded really similar to mine in that this was a great guy, he made all his money, he was charismatic, everyone loved him, and, you know, she was safely able to get away because they lived in different states but yeah they they will most of them put up an image and not just in our communities too I mean in white communities or whatever mm. the research I've done they always do that they always put up a different image and then when you're behind closed doors you see a complete monster now every now and then you'll see like a grandiose uh type of abuser where everybody's like hey this guy's bad news but it makes it harder for them when they're obvious, if they're going to be secretive and have this whole false identity, it makes it easier. So yeah, there, you will have that. And then, like I said, a lot of gaslighting um, makes it look like they're the good guy. So you mentioned the guests. So why don't we talk about, talk about the podcast and then we'll talk about more in detail some, some of the guests that you had on and, and the topics that you all covered. So how long has the podcast been running so far? I started the podcast in, I think it was November, so it's, it's still really, really new, but I've, I've had some some good support, so I'm happy about that, um, and I just kind of hit the ground running because I really wanted to speak out and, like, share some of the things that I saw in this series made. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it kind of reflects a lot of what goes on with black women and like I try to keep the story centered on and around black women in particular but I think that there were things that black women could take away from that show too made um because this this main character comes across some of the things that we come across um especially when it comes to I mean not not every black woman is dealing with you know poverty obviously but a lot of us do deal with it. And so she had to deal with, okay, so this guy is the primary breadwinner. How am I supposed to get my child and myself out of this? You know, and it, it went into detail because it was so realistic. I mean, when I had to go through my legal portion 
often with this last relationship, reading some of that stuff was so hard. And like finding help can be so difficult when you don't know what's going on. And and the people in these spaces too, the people that are supposed to help, the people at the um the shelters and everything like that, they aren't always very friendly. And that was another reason why I started Sama too, because I had people um reaching out to me because I had just started Sama like it was just a Facebook page. It wasn't even a podcast yet. And I had people reaching out to me for help. And so I would try to call these different places on their behalf. And the people were not nice in those spaces. And I'm like, you're working with people that have been mentally and physically abused, but you have this awful attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, that was another thing too. So there's so many barriers to leaving. And I I want to let people know that I empathize with that, but at the same time, it's smart to make a plan um, and also listen to these stories because this same thing could be happening to some woman and it it won't be until she realizes or she hears somebody else's story that, hey, wait a minute, this is what happened to me. This is not, no, this is not normal. Um, So yeah, I hope I didn't go off topic. Oh, no, 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 that's, no, that's, that's perfect. That's perfect. So even though even though that the podcast hasn't been running that long, you know, pretty much since the end of last year, I, I've noticed that it's it's growing, you know, and it's, and it's growing uh pretty pretty quickly too. So that's great to see. So before we even get into some of these um specific guests and these specific topics, why don't we go ahead and, and uh, plug that podcast? So where where can people listen to um listen to listen to the Sama podcast? So right now I'm just on YouTube. Um, I really, <laughs> I want to move everything over to Spotify eventually, but right now um, we are just on YouTube. It's Sama, and then in parentheses you got Sisters Against Mental Abuse, um, and we just we have a few subscribers, you know. Um, definitely check us out, and then we're also on Instagram at Sama Together Now. And we are also on Facebook as Sisters Against Mental Abuse. And another thing, I'm always looking for more guests. So like if you have any Black women that are in the mental health field um, or Black women that just want to share their stories, the goal is to create a community of Black women that know what each other has gone through and can connect because that's something that'll keep you in those bad relationships is when it's just you. Because you'll take on the blame, you'll take on the responsibility. But if you have some support, it would make it easier. Right. Great. Great. Amazing. And that information um, with the YouTube link is in the is in the description. So go ahead and matter of fact, you could take a pause right now. Go ahead and, and click on the link. Go ahead and subscribe to, to Sama on, on YouTube and then come right back over here and go ahead and do that now. So that's one that's one form of support. And also to end Misty some guests, you know, I guess the unfortunate thing about it is that most of us know someone who's been through this type of experience. So I'm sure we all at least know one person that can tell their story and in turn, telling their story can help someone else who's going through a similar situation. So let's uh, talk about some of the guests that you that you've had on. Some of which I I brought to you. Yes, <laughs> to yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, on both sides, women telling the stories and also mental health professionals. So, so who are some some of the guests that you had on so far? Yes. Um, so one of <laughs> it seems to be a fan favorite. Um, you introduced me to a psychotherapist by the name of Vanessa. Uh, people love her. They keep asking for her to come back. I got to oh, get wow. with her on that. Um, and we kind of talked a little bit about everything. We talked about how mental abuse affects Black women, um, like the different kind of barriers to Black women seeking help. Um, and it's just, it was an amazing conversation. I can't wait to have her on again. Um, and then I think you also sent over Latoya. Latoya's yeah. story was really similar to mine too. That was another one. Um, I did have a previous relationship where um the the person I was dating so he was this guy was it's a different guy he was abusive but it was something it was so obvious he was a grandiose kind of person um and much like Latoya this man lied to the police to have me sent to jail or whatever for the night 
Um, and so that that was really deep. And I know Latoya is still going through it. Like we, there was so much to cover with her because it's still ongoing. Right. Um, and so uh, that was uh, oh, another one. Um, I also had like my own personal therapist on. <laughs> And she is just uh, now she's amazing because she was the victim of mental abuse, but then she also became a counselor after that. Um, and so that was really, really uh, that was a deep conversation. Um, and then I've had other people on um, my friend Kayla talked about abuse within her family, like mental abuse. And, and we started getting into how in a lot of black homes, um growing up you would get whoopings for everything mm. or you know you drop some I remember I had to be like seven or eight and I didn't flush the toilet I got a whooping for that wow. um and it shouldn't have been that way um and just uh, there's so much more to cover on the family aspect of it but Kayla spoke with me about that and then we had sort of a, a bigger YouTuber come on um Lexus Exodus she's really popular she talked about her situation and in so many of these stories, there'll be the red flag. So I encourage them to say, hey, what was the red flag that you ignored? We always have to go back and think about that. Um, and so those are some of the guests that I've had so far, but I also do um, other sorts of videos to point out um, cases of mental abuse. I give you a good illustration of it. Um, I've also included the story of a black woman who had just left the father of her child and he he took her life um and it didn't appear to be physical before but she left him for a reason and it was one of those turbulent relationships where they would break up and get back together and break up and get back together and they were arguing and she just she was about to leave and he shot her in the back so um those kind of stories are super heavy to do, so I don't, I can't do them very often, but it is something worth noting because she wanted to co-parent with this person, but she should have been a little bit more safer, a little bit more careful, because a lot of Black women want to be responsible, they want to do the right thing, especially when it comes to their children, because so many of the children in our community don't always know their fathers or have a relationship, and so... Right. Um, yeah, so I, I do different kinds of content. Great, great. Yeah, give them nice, nice little variety there. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Very, very important work. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the but the podcast is the is the main is the main focus for for Sama at the moment. Uh, what what else do you envision Sama to be? You know, in addition to the the podcast. So <laughs> it's funny because I started it backwards. The intention mm -hmm. was to start a support group um, and a community for Black women that were going through mental abuse or who had gone through it and also to educate. Um, but that's how we started. But that's not where it went. Obviously, I still do plan to have um, peer run support groups and like peer counseling sort of things. Um, so far, we've had people come to us needing help. I, I mentioned that earlier. I've had people from uh, tribes, like Native American people reach out. And wow. I haven't, I'm not going to turn anyone away who's looking for help, but I have to remind them that the focus is Black women. So mm -hmm. I would like for the space to be a place for Black women to have a voice but at the same time, I'm not telling nobody, no, <laughs> right, right. but I, I've had, um, I have one person in particular and we check in with each other and she told me about her situation. This is a black woman, but she's not in the space to leave. So, you know, we sent her some books because that was her escape. Um, hmm. So just building relationships is really, really important. But in the future, definitely want to do support groups and um, set up maybe donations to help people get out. Cause I've had some people, who wanted to leave, but they're in a financial situation. So, yeah, yeah, I came across one of my old classmates, one of my old friends from college, who was, uh, you know, she was taking up a donation to to secure some safe housing. It didn't go into you know sp much detail, specific detail, but you know, I'm assuming it was a similar type of situation where she had to get away from 
uh, whoever she was living with. I'm not sure if it was a spouse or or family, but she needed to secure some safe housing. So I've seen it seen it recently, you know. So for sure, that's um, that's definitely necessary, and um, and it will be absolutely helpful for you know those black women who are going through going through those experiences. Will you also put together a, a directory of uh, phone numbers and maybe phone numbers and organizations that women can can seek out uh, to, to help a system also? I, and I see that's a big project. I did start working on that, um, but I, <laughs> I was going by the ones that were the most helpful or the most empathetic because like I said, I've called some of them and they're not nice at all. Mm, um, and okay. that that's also something that will cause people who are in these abusive relationships to not want to do nothing. Like, why yeah, are you yeah, answering the phone help. with attitude? Right. Yeah. Like yeah. this person is in a, in a fragile place most times and you're going to be the first person they interact with. Right. And right. Um, yeah. And so also, I don't know if I mentioned, I do have a Facebook group um, and I haven't on what is the word i haven't released it yet or anything like right. that but <laughs> yeah. that's where I, I would really like to start just being in a space where they can have those conversations and then we'll move on to like actual meetings or groups mm -hmm. like that because the thing that gets me is when i was going through my situation because i everything just wrapped up kind of recently um they did offer support groups but the black women's support group was focused on sexual abuse and physical violence where mm. the other groups you know they dealt with all kinds and so there is a need for support of black women in mentally abusive situations whether it's with family or friends I've had some friends that would try to pull those techniques on me too um or relationships or you know what I mean so that is something else that I really want to put together okay all right great great amazing I think we're pretty much uh, covered covered just about everything. Is is there anything else that we did not cover that you uh, that you want to touch on? Um, no, not really. Just I appreciate all the support. I mean, from you personally, Nick. Mm. But then you know, whoever comes over, I try to be in touch with everyone. So like, if they comment or something like that, or if they need help, or if they message the page. Um, I try to make sure that they get a response and get the information that they need. So, you know, feel free. I want it to be a community. <laughs> so feel free. And then um, if they do have stories, if anyone does have a story or just wants to ask questions, um, the Gmail account, the email account is Sama together now at gmail.com. So if anyone needs to reach out, they can get me there directly. Yep, and that information will be in the description as well for the email. Thank you, uh, Misty, for coming on and sharing this important information and giving giving our Black women another resource, you know, to help them because it's not it's definitely not easy dealing with this, and it's especially not easy when you can't find or it's hard to find proper support from from organizations that are supposed to be helpful, but they're not being helpful. This is another step towards getting them the uh the help that they need why don't you run through run through everything one more time i know you just gave us the email but but tell us where they can listen to the podcast and and get in touch with you just run down everything <laughs> one okay more time. <laughs> so we are on facebook um sisters against mental abuse on facebook you can like um we are on instagram at sama together now uh, Gmail is Sama together now at gmail.com. And then of course the YouTube is Sama S A M A sisters against mental abuse. And that is, that's everything I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. And what's, what's your, uh, in, in, then you can close out with your, with your tagline before, before I give my closing, you can give your, your tagline. Cause I like, I like that tagline that you do at the end of each episode. <laughs> okay. Just remember that mental abuse is abuse. Mm, I love it. Well, not not the abuse part, but I love you know, <laughs> I, I know, love that I we're it. making people aware that <laughs> mental abuse is abuse, and they and they uh, should go and seek that assistance out there. Once again, thank you, Misty, for for coming on and telling us your your story and and starting this this uh, very important organization to to help out Black women. Thank you, thank you for having me on. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And to everybody else out there, after you go subscribe to Sisters Against Men Mental Abuse on, on YouTube, come back over here and subscribe to The Seven Spheres of Money if you haven't done that already. And uh, share both of those channels with everyone you know. And as always, we wish everyone a pom-pom lifestyle. That is plenty of money, peace of mind. And we invite you to come join us on the beaches of the World Club. And your beach doesn't have to be next to sand or water, but your beach is wherever you find your personal freedom, your mental tranquility, and that place where abuse doesn't exist, mental or physical, only healthy relationships. So we'll see you on the next episode of Nick's Knowledge and Notions NQ Science Series. Take care. Peace. You gotta have this amazing drink. This pop, pop lifestyle. I'm not telling you, no joke. It's real, baby. But guess what? We put the work in. That's right. Four dirty little words. That's right. Discipline, accountability, plug into a system of people that are doing what you want to do in life. And number four, do the work. And in three to five years, I said three to five years, not three to five minutes, not three to five months, not three to five days. Three to five years, you can be consumer debt free. You have a six figure passive income. And you can own businesses, you can buy real estate, and leverage the tax laws, and have a pom pom lifestyle. There's plenty of money, peace of mind. Come join us on the beaches of the world, bro. Show them that beach. If you are serious about learning how to command your money instead of your money commanding you, Duransburg Jr., who we all know as DJ the Money Coach, is the person for the job. Here I was, this middle-aged woman who had so many financial mistakes over the years, feeling stuck and even hopeless, and the only way out I saw was prayer. Well, apparently prayer or my prayers were answered when I saw a video of DJ The Money Coach as a guest speaker on one of my favorite YouTube content creators channel. My attention was immediately drawn to him as he told his own story about pulling himself out of that same sunken place I felt like I could never get out of. It was truly inspiring. But the icing on the cake for me was that not only because of his many years of experience working with governments and Fortune 1000 companies teaching financial education, but that he is linked to some very heavy hitters in the financial education arena. That pretty much sealed the deal for me, knowing that he didn't mind reaching back to help those of us who otherwise would have just continued to go through our everyday money struggles. Um, so on our second meeting, DJ the Money Coach went over a risk tolerance questionnaire with me in order to deliver a financial analysis custom made for me. So with him, there is no one size fits all and he is uh, independent, meaning he can deliver more and cater to where you are right now. His seven spheres of money system is definitely putting me on track towards financial freedom in the near future. His system is my lifeline I needed to pull me out of a drowning pool of debt and predatory lending. Also, having to report my spending to him every week is training me how to become more disciplined in my spending habits. Hi everybody, my name is Altavis F. Fleary. I am a notary and loan signing agent. I'm currently working with DJ The Money Coach on setting up my financial business strategies for my business operations. So far, DJ's been great. He gives great advice, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work with his team and making sure that we set me up for the near future. Thanks again, DJ.
What's going on, everyone? My name is Tajir. I'm a young professional from New York. I just want to give a big shout out to DJ, the money coach. I had a consultation call with him and it was amazing. I learned about so many things from insurance to buying real estate and getting leverage on transactions to tax loopholes, tax pitfalls, 401ks, IRAs, much, much, much more. If you want to verge, if you want to advance your financial future and you're not sure what you do or where to go, I definitely recommend seeing DJ, the money coach. Hello, my name is Crystal Jones and I'm in the healthcare field. I would like to take the opportunity to thank Erica Williams and DJ The Money Coach along with his team for providing valuable gems to help me get on a successful financial path. And yes, I am ready for that pom-pom lifestyle. Hey, I chose to rock with DJ The Money Coach because he gave me during our complimentary consulting session, he gave me um, three things that I think is going to be game changer. One, he gave me an action plan to increase revenue in my business. Two, he gave me two conferences that I'm going to attend that I know are going to be game changers in my business for networking. And three, he gave me an action plan to pay down debt, save so that we can buy properties and it won't put a strain on our household. So that's why I rock with DJ Mike. The reason I decided to um, get up with DJ was because I saw him on a couple different platforms and he seemed like he really knew what he was talking about and some of the things he said resonated with me. And that was confirmed once I got on the phone with him. And about 45 minutes, he gave me enough gems, enough game to probably save me thousands and thousands of dollars because I was leaving so much money on the table from tax advantages, business structure, so on and so forth. So if you're looking for somebody that has experience, if you're looking for somebody that actually can do what they say they can do, I would advise you to um, rock out with DJ The Money Coach. DJ, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for everything.